Welcome back. Today, we're diving into a critical cybersecurity topic, cookie stealer malware. In this video, we'll cover what a cookie stealer is, how it's created in Python, and we'll even show you a demo of a login bypass of a website. But remember, this video is for educational purposes only. Misuse of this knowledge is illegal and unethical. Always use your skills for good. Let's get started. So what exactly is a cookie stealer? A cookie stealer is a type of malware that targets the cookies stored in your web browser. These cookies contain vital information, such as session tokens, which keep you logged into websites. If someone manages to steal your cookies, they can potentially hijack your online sessions and access your accounts without needing your username or password. This image shows how a cookie stealer malware works. The target unknowingly opens a file that looks like a regular program, like notepad.exe. The malware then reads cookies stored on the target's computer. Finally, it secretly sends the stolen cookie data to the hacker's server, allowing the hacker to hijack online sessions. All right, let's get started with the coding part. We're going to create a Python script called cookiestealer.py. First, importing the necessary modules, we can assign the URL later. Next, we define the paths to important files that Chrome uses to store data. The variable Chrome path is the main folder where Chrome stores user data. Local state path variable is storing the Chrome's local state path. This file contains the encryption key that Chrome uses to protect cookies and the cookies path. This is the database file where Chrome stores all the cookies. Get encryption key function. This function is responsible for retrieving the encryption key from Chrome's local state file. Chrome encrypts cookies to keep them secure, so we need this key to decrypt them. It reads the local state file, decodes the encryption key from base64, and then uses win32crypt to decrypt it. Get cookies function. This function connects to Chrome's cookies database, reads all the cookies, and decrypts any that are encrypted. First, it copies the cookies database to a temporary location so that we can read it without any issues. We'll begin by connecting to the SQLite database where Chrome stores its cookies. Once connected, we'll execute a query to select the host key, cookie name, value, and encrypted value from the database. For each cookie, if the value is encrypted, we'll use the AES method to decrypt it. The decrypted cookies are then stored in a list capturing each cookie's name, value, and associated domain. Finally, we have the main function, which is the entry point of the script. It starts by launching notepad.exe to make the user believe they've opened a harmless file. Next, it collects the cookies by calling the getCookies function and sends them to the specified server using a POST request via the requests module. The script concludes by calling the main function to execute everything. Let's create the server. Let's importing the necessary classes and methods from Flask. Next, create an instance of the Flask application. We define a route to handle POST requests at the root endpoint. Inside this route, we extract the data from request.json, loop through the list, and print each item. Finally, return a simple OK response to the client and run the server on port 901. That's it. Let's start the building process. Now it's time to assign the server URL. First, run your Python server by typing pythonserver.py in your terminal. Once your server is running, copy the local address it provides. Next, we'll use Cloudflare Tunnel to expose your server to the internet. Download the Cloudflare Tunnel tool from the link in the description below if you haven't already. Open a new terminal window and start the tunnel by typing cloudflare.xe-url followed by the local address you copied earlier. When you execute this command, Cloudflare Tunnel will generate a public URL. Copy this URL and paste it into the URL variable in your script. This will make your server accessible from anywhere on the web. With the server set up and exposed, we can now proceed to build the malware. In another terminal, run the build.bat file. This will install the necessary packages and compile the malware into an executable. As you can see, our malware has built successfully and appears as a standard notepad application. Now it's time to test it out. For this demonstration, we're using two machines. On the left, we have our host machine running the server, and on the right, we have the target Windows machine. We'll run the malware executable, named notepad.exe, on the target machine. Let's see if it successfully captures the cookies. 
And there we go. The cookie stealer has transmitted the cookie data from the target machine to our host machine. Here, you can see various cookies from different sites. Let's open one of these URLs on our host machine. The website prompts for login credentials. We don't know the username and password, but we have the session token from the cookies. By copying and pasting this token and refreshing the page, we can bypass the login screen without needing a username or password. Just to reiterate, this is my own website for demonstration purposes. In the future, I'll be introducing a challenge to hack my labs, so stay tuned. Remember, it's crucial to protect yourself. Always use up-to-date antivirus software. Enable your firewall to block unauthorized connections. Keep your system and applications updated with the latest security patches and only download software from trusted sources. Stay safe out there. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more cybersecurity insights. See you next time. I think the girls with their nails done now.